We're speaking to Altrincham manager Phil Parkinson after another ding dong battle with Bradford Park Avenue. This one is in the FA Cup uh, rather than the uh, National League North, and it's finished Altrincham for Bradford Park Avenue too, which means we're in the next round of the FA Cup. Phil, you must be delighted with that. Absolutely. We knew today was going to be a really tight game from when we played them away. Although we won away previously, I openly stated that I felt we were slightly lucky for Tuitus to, to take that result because I thought Bradford uh, probably on the, the, the role of play, deserved to, to get something from that game. So today we knew we had to play well and the, the players certainly didn't let us down and they got a well-deserved victory. I felt we played well today and deserved the victory. We're certainly on the uh, the front foot to begin with, uh, in charge for the opening few minutes, but then we found ourselves uh, behind uh, to a penalty that, uh, probably depending on the angle, angle you viewed it from, you might have had a different view, uh, but what, what was your take on it? Yeah, from where we were, I said to Jake at half-time, um, even though everybody's saying the lads dived, it makes the decision easy for the ref if you lunge at a player. Now, if the lads dive, then it's not a penalty, but we're just sort of asking the players to make uh, intelligent decisions, and Jake's been outstanding for us, so I'm not going to question question him too much, but I felt he made the ref's decision a little bit easy there, because like I said, as you said, from the angle, from where I was, it looked like a penalty, but everybody the other side of the pitch was saying there was no way it was a penalty. And again, I'm sure when I look it back, because Jake's an honest lad, he said he's not touched the lad, he's dived. So for me, I'll take my captain's word on his 300th appearance and say it was no penalty. One of many qualities uh, this team un under you uh, has, Phil, is, is resilience as well as footballing ability. And we show plenty of that, I think, haven't we, today, to come back uh, from being behind on two occasions. Yeah, um, that word there, it's massive. And we touched on that at half-time. We, we were devastated we conceded two goals again. Poor goals uh, from our point of view. Um, full credit to Bradford. They're a very good outfit, but I felt we, we, we give them easy goals with very little pressure. Whereas when we played them away... We were very lucky at times because the pressure they put us under, they should have maybe got something. But today, I didn't think they put us under enough pressure to warrant the goals they got, particularly in the first half. So we knew if we could just sort of eradicate them poor decisions and mistakes, that we would go on to win the game. We are a very confident, uh, forward-thinking team. We never sort of look at how we're going to stop a team. We look at how we're going to beat a team. And I felt that, that proved dividends today with the way we played and the result we got. Two set pieces. I would imagine you weren't too pleased, probably with the first one, the one that uh, Bradford got their noses in front again. But then uh, we came back with one with uh, Max Harrett's corner and, and, and a really, a really smart finish from James, James Jones. Yeah, James is uh, he's probably one of the more threatening players we've got from a set piece. He he's technically very good and he arrives in the right place at the right time. So expect a few more goals from James in the future. But like you said, the set piece we were really frustrated with because they hit us with that at their place as well and we're asking the lads to learn from mistakes and we spoke about at half-time how we would sort of defend that a little bit um, better. And we did in the second half, but we can't keep making the same mistakes. That, that finish by James Jones made it 3-2. You think, well, it's going to be a bit, bit of a nervy finish, but, which it wasn't really because I thought we, we, we controlled the game well in the second half. But just to be absolutely sure, we're, you know, what a fourth goal from uh, Jordan Hume. Yeah, Jordan Hume is, uh, he's, as I've said previously, there's, the words can't describe him sometimes. He's, we're, we're so lucky to have him. I'm so glad I picked him up when I did and, and me and Neil obviously looked into it heavily before we brought him to the club because it was a big gamble with what had happened to him previously. But when you see goals are going in like that, he's, he's, he's absolutely superb and we call him his lordship in the changing room because uh, he, he warrants that he's, he's absolutely fantastic he's been great for the football club since he's come in the fans love him um, we certainly love having him here so he just topped off a great performance with an outstanding goal I think heads might have to roll at the BBC weather forecast, be, uh, weather centre rather, because the forecast was for overcast skies. So we thought that would be all right for Jordan because of his eye condition. Was being bright sunshine virtually all, all afternoon. I mean, how's he cope with that? Yeah, he's, well, he's obviously coped, hasn't he? I mean, his eye was definitely in, unless he's seen three goals and hit the middle of them. So he's he's done great. And I must say, a uh, uh, drenchy in goal for them today was outstanding. Some of the saves he made from the players. I mean, we 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 could have had a couple more today. There was some, but they could have had a couple as well. I think they've hit the post, but I felt with the the run of play, uh, I, I really I thought their keeper was outstanding today and really kept the score line down. Well, he's a renowned shot stopper, isn't he? And particularly that shot from John Johnson just before James's goal was an exceptional save, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and as you said, he's a renowned shot stopper. Um, he did really well today. But, so, but on a serious note, on Jordan though, uh, uh, Phil, obviously he did, he did cope because he played so well and he scored such a brilliant goal. But w was there any discomfort, do you know, or did he say, well, actually, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad? 
No, as I said, if, if he told us that he was in any kind of discomfort, I think today in the FA Cup, we would just tell him to get on with it anyway. So uh, hopefully he's past it now and we don't have any reoccurrences of the eye issue that's caused him problems. That's good to hear. Um, we're just talking on the gantry about man of the match candidates and there, there were candidates really all over the pitch, weren't there? We thought, think Max Harrop got it and probably deserved it. So he's all over the park, isn't he? As well as his skill factor, he's, he's a tenacious little so-and-so, isn't he? Yeah, Max Arup come to us as a winger. We converted him to a centre mid because that's where he saw himself playing. So we trusted him, we backed him, and he's he's backed our judgment. Um, and he's been at, he, he gets stronger and better every game. I remember the first game he played here, people were telling him he never played that lad again. Um, and then now, like Jordan, I think he's established himself. He's turning into a top conference north midfielder. He's got ability, but the thing is with Max, he's tenacious. He gets around the pitch really well. And like I said, we're very lucky to have Max Arup at the football club. Probably after that, Jordan, the way he got stronger and stronger in the game, uh, would have been a candidate, and perhaps as well, and just a mention of him, because as you said, it's his 300th game for the club, which is quite a landmark, uh, perhaps a word or two about Jake Malt. Yeah, there's not many words you can say about Jake. Uh, the worrying thing for me, he's seen off a lot of managers, so I had a little bit of bans with him about that. Hopefully I'm not another notch on his belt, but um, hey, listen, they call, it, they call him Malteringham for a reason, don't they? Because he, you cut him down the middle, he's going to bleed red and white. He loves this club. When I was deciding if I was going to come, he was a big reason I come. He spoke to me at length. I think we spoke for about an hour before I come because I know Jake with being a local lad. Um, and again, I trusted his judgment on what he was saying about the football club. I'm so glad I listened to him. I'm so glad I trusted him and made him a captain. And uh, he, I'm just filled with delight every time I see him on the pitch because he, he gives everything to the football club. And uh, he's won a year championship. And like I said, days like today when he's made his 300th appearance, he warrants every accolade he gets. He's been absolutely outstanding for this football club. And just finally, uh, Phil, we're in the hat for, for Monday's draw and you know what the FA Cup means to Altering, given the, the, the tradition and the history of this club in this competition. you just got to sort of sum up what, what that means for you as manager? It means everything. I mean, I think if you pan over and you look at the FA Cup sign on the... Uh, on the, on the stands that I think it was Rich Bentley he, he privately sent me a message so I, I replied to him saying no pressure then Rich because if we don't win today you might have to change that sign but this, this club is steeped in FA Cup history I knew that before I came I know what it means to everybody at this football club to do well in this cup but it is a cup competition and the reason we've done so well in this competition and made such a name for us is because anybody can beat anybody on the day. So it was a huge game for us today and we've come through unscathed and we're into the next round. One, one game away from that first round proper, it's something I'm desperate to do as a manager and my management team and my players are all chomping at the bit so we'll be eagerly awaiting the draw come 12 o'clock on Monday. Those are thoughts then of manager Phil Parkinson after a rousing FA Cup tie here at the J. Davidson Stadium that's finished Altrincham 4, Bradford Park Avenue 2. Thanks for your viewing.